Stay tuned to the Ask Dr. Ross podcast. It's created to give you info to succeed at college. Our hosts are highly qualified. Dr. Catherine Ross is a member of the University of Texas System's Academy of Distinguished Teachers. She's also a popular professor of 19th century English literature. Co-host and multimedia editor Nathan Witt provides a student perspective. Ask Dr. Ross is a community service of the University of Texas at Tyler. Hi, I'm Catherine Ross, and this is a podcast for parents, students in school who are thinking about going to college, college students who are already here, adults who are thinking of maybe going back to college, and really anyone who wants to know more about what life in colleges and universities is like today in the U.S. of A. I'm here with my friend Nathan Witt, who's a student here. If you'd like to ask Dr. Ross a question, you can email us at adrquestions at gmail.com. No question is too big, too small. There's no right or wrong questions. We're here for it all. Today, we're going to answer a question of mine. I realize, Dr. Ross, that your tuition includes a lot of stuff that you may not realize up front. What are some of the lesser known things that your tuition includes that most students don't know about? I'm glad you brought it up. And I remember the first time you said you were wondering about that. Yeah. I was thinking about things like we have a writing center and we have all sorts of tutoring services. Yeah. And a lot of times individual departments will do special things with their students. I know, for example, the psychology department has a really interesting program where they help their students who are training to become, I guess, not college counselors, but psychologists. They call it the mentor center. But I know one of the things that you noticed, and it's kind of aligned with the psychology department, is that aside from the department where they teach all the stuff about psychology, is we have this whole area, I think they call it the Student Counseling Center. And I don't know if you've, have you looked into that at all? I have, and that was one of the resources that really put me on to this topic because I have a lot of friends who are not able to receive mental health services because they just can't afford it. It's expensive, myself included, actually. I have not had access to a mental health service in a little while just because it was something as a college student I couldn't afford. And here I come to find out, actually, I'm kind of paying for it because it's included in my tuition. And that kind of started me asking, like, what else is included in my tuition? And then I was thinking about the gym. Like, most colleges have an exercise gym that you have access to. And I've been taking full advantage of that because... My tuition pays for it. If you're out in the world and you're not going to university, you have to pay a pretty big dollar to get yourself into a gym, a monthly fee and stuff like that. And so we have that athletic center and it's got handball courts and racquetball courts and a swimming pool. There's yoga classes and all sorts of things like that. But to go back to the counseling thing, I was looking into that myself because Wellness has been a big issue sure. ever since the pandemic. Everybody's been talking about it. And student mental health, frankly, faculty and staff mental health has been a little wobbly these days. And uh, so I found out that not only can you get regular counseling through the counseling center, um, although sometimes it takes a little while to, to get into the queue, sure. but they have emergency stuff. They also have groups. And I was looking into that. They have group counseling for things like Social confidence, body image, healthy relationships, folks who have OCD. They even have couples counseling. I didn't know that. I did not know that. Yeah, although the trick is you have to both be students. students. You can't be a student whose husband works downtown or something (laughs) like that. So I guess they wouldn't let me and my husband in on that. But things like that, that students... A need. You need the physical activity. You need to get outside and move around. But also, we've needed a lot of mental health support. And it makes me happy to know that this community, in fact, has dedicated itself to to wellness. Now, and I'm talking about our university, but I've got contacts and friends at other universities in other parts of the country and even in England, and we're all real worried about that. So I think you can pretty safely assume that anybody who goes off to college who has some mental health stressors and wants to get some counseling can do it, and it's paid for. Yeah, it's included in your tuition, most of them. And I think that's important to preface as we go into today's episode, is that we're talking specifically about UT system stuff, but we're going to keep it broad because every college is different. But just keep that in mind as you're 
picking your university. Everyone is going to offer a couple little different things. We were talking before we started recording, Dr. Ross, about how every university, every college kind of has its niche, has its specialties, its areas of focus. I know I went to Colin College Plano, uh-huh. and they were big on production. So they have a very high quality, dedicated production music studio. I know here on campus at UT Tyler, we do not have that because that's not particularly an area of focus for us. But what we do have is a dedicated broadcast production studio because that's something our university prioritizes. So it'll depend on where your university has drawn out their focuses. We talked about this earlier in one of the other episodes about how students need to get themselves engaged in their community. Yeah. And so you got to find that out. But just to follow up on what you said about each campus having its sort of specialties, that's really true. And earlier when we talked about getting into college, I know we talked about how important it is to be aware of the strengths of your university. I remember when I was going off to college, my uncle, who was a university president, said, be sure you ask how many volumes are in the library, (laughs) because his thought was he was a scientist and he wanted to be sure it was a really rich research place. But there's some folks who are going off to college to play baseball (laughs) and get a good education along the way. A lot of times folks don't know that there's a cracking good English department at my university or that there is a rising jazz combo teacher who is doing amazing things. One of the things that we've talked about engagement and being proactive and finding out, that's the other thing. There's stuff to know about your university. One thing I found out recently about this university, we have a huge Center for Financial Wellness program. Oh, yeah. I couldn't believe the stuff. They sit down with students and they teach them about how to spend money, how to save money. They talk about budgeting, credit cards, spending and savings, how to consolidate and repay loans. They talk about taxes. They even talk to our students about retirement planning, which surprised me. And also, the center has a group of programs for veterans, something I wasn't aware of. Sure. Yeah. When you sent me this list of everything we might want to talk about today, Student Financial Wellness Center was pretty crazy. There's a lot that I need to take advantage of. I wanted to ask Dr. Ross, where, as you compiled this list of everything we want to talk about today, how'd you find this information? If someone wants to find it for their own university, like where can they start to look? You'll laugh when I tell you. Okay. We now use what's called a learning management system called Canvas. Some campuses use something called Blackboard. And to prepare our classes, the university sends out a kind of a shell template for all Canvas classes. And the very first... I can believe that. Yeah. <laughs> and the very first module that's up on everybody's screen, it's pre-prepared for you, is a list of student resources. And I clicked on that and there were like 25 links. And most of them sent me off to the university's main website. Yeah. But then you, boy, you start clicking on links and you start discovering all sorts of stuff. I think what we'll be sure to do is post some of these links. Absolutely. We'll post probably your full list. Yeah. Um, And of course, there will be different kinds of links at different campuses. Sure. But knowing that the universities try real hard to get this information available. So the other thing I was going to talk about is the sort of undiscovered but very precious parts of college have to do with relationships, Nathan. And you can never predict who's going to speak to you when you get there. You can never predict what professor or what particular class experience is going to mean a lot to you. I remember in my undergraduate, I got really close to a professor who ended up becoming kind of a role model for me personally. And a lot of students are afraid of professors, and especially the new students. They come in and they've been taught by their high school teachers that professors are terrifying beings. And in, in fact, most professors are in the field because they really care about students. And so there's that. There's a, another thing. Obviously, I come from the academic side, and I want all students to come off to college and realize how incredibly wonderful William Wordsworth is, or the novels of the Bronte sisters. But most kids will tell you they're really there for the social life. <laughs> it's a, Yeah, it certainly is an influencer. And just as much as there's no place like college for the educational advantages. There's also no place like college for the social advantages. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff. We talked about the gym memberships. Depending on where you go, gym memberships are super expensive monthly and you have the free access to that. Another big thing is like intramural sports. I have friends whose 
pretty much entire college personality is like their intramural sports involvement. And they just, they're in pretty much every league that exists and every day they're practicing for this team or that team. Teamwork is one of the things that employers are now asking all universities to try to get students to practice more. In fact, we just recently had a speaker from Washington, D.C., the Department of Education, tell us that is the number one thing. The number one thing is I could believe work skills. COVID, I hear so often from people that COVID just really hurt people's social skills. Oh, yes. And, and you know. <laughs> mine too. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's real. Yeah. yeah, I think mine too as well. I got lucky with the nonprofit. I, I stayed meeting with people and as difficult as it was to meet with people. But yeah, that's a big one. and. Your university, wherever you go, provides a lot of opportunities for social stuff. Pretty much everyone has Greek life. I feel like that's safe to assume. Yeah. Unless you go to a... Really s- tiny schools. Really private tiny schools. schools. Yeah. Private, a private school I went to had Greek life. Did it? Some community Actually, colleges Actually, two don't. of the ones I went to also did. Yeah. 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 I, I think it's becoming more and more commonplace, too, because it's such a good source for community. Greek life used to have a bad reputation, but it's gotten cleaned up a lot. And, yeah. And, uh, and they push academics, they push social responsibility, they, they push community serve. Yeah, and I know on our campus, at least, our Greek life population, on average, has a higher GPA than our yes, student body. they do. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. There's a ton of, I think you might have touched, like, the writing center. Yeah. But there's a ton of programs like that. It's not just the writing center. There's a math tutoring program. Oh, yeah. There's tutoring for everything. There's, I know, like, for us, one of our things we have is a production lab yes and we have lab techs who are there every single day of the week and they train you on equipment they help you on projects and stuff like that all those are great resources as well and you mentioned the fact that universities usually and colleges usually have the money to give us a lot of these technologies computer labs we have a digital design studio yeah and things like that so Students who are interested in creating their own websites, creating their own podcasts and things like that. In my department, it's actually becoming a kind of a new minor to study and prepare to be able to do digital production of different sorts of really? things. Yeah, it is. Cool. You also get some of the things you get in high school, like choir and band, sure, yeah. combos, and student government is a big deal. Yeah, and that's cool. That's cool it because, cool. first of all, Everyone knows it looks great on a resume, student government, but also, at least from my perspective, the idea of being able to speak for, fight for, and advocate for your student body, you and your fellow man, I think that's pretty awesome. And it's leadership. Almost every one of the past three presidents of the SGA, one has gone on to law school, one has gone on to an MBA program, and I forget what the other one was, but they've all done real, oh, and one went to Washington. To work in an office for a legislator of some sort. Oh, well. Yeah. There's a real chance to sort of launch yourself out into that career world. Yeah, and you're around passionate people. Yeah. That's what's cool. Same thing with the Patriot Talon, which is our student media organization. Now talk about that a little bit, because that's a really exciting area right yeah, now. Yeah. And every, again, we don't want to paint with broad strokes, but pretty much every college has some kind of student media org used to be just the college newspaper, the right. Daily Texan down in Austin. Yeah, Most have broadened much farther mm-hmm. past newspaper. In fact, we, we don't even do a print newspaper anymore. We do a news website, Yeah, but we do a, a whole lot more than that. We do documentaries. We do podcasting, obviously. Mm-hmm. It's where I got my start. We do all kinds of unique stuff. We do a social media-inspired student broadcast where we bring the news, but we also do fun segments and stuff like that. Yeah, and I've watched the group of students that are doing that, including you, yeah. and there's an energy and enthusiasm yeah. that is really delightful to watch. And it's awesome. where else could you do that? Yeah, and where else can you do that where you can know nothing and someone <laughs> will train you how to do everything and then put a $6,000 camera in your hand and say, go create whatever you want to create. Yeah. That's been the awesome thing for me is that your tuition pays for a student media org, and that's why I said almost every college has it, because it is federally mandated. So yeah, every college has it in some capacity. So that's really cool. You're around like-minded people. You're around people, again, with passion. That's such an important thing to have 
in college. And this, uh, I went through the website, just a very little university, and I found 74 student organizations. Oh, I'm not surprised. 74. And there are things like for Asian students, for Hispanic students. There's one for black engineers, women engineers, huh. black women engineers. <laughs> Wait, there's a different one? For... Yes, yes. Cool. There's one for first-generation students. Of course. They've yeah. got several for different religious groups. Tons of associations for future professionals in marketing, engineering, pharmacy, nursing, etc. So that you get your hand in on the kinds of professional organizations that later on will be very yeah. important to you in your career. And all those and you had to practice them before it's yeah. a big deal yet. And all know? those come uh-huh. from what will be your student engagement office. That's where right. all that stems right. from. And your tuition pays all of their paychecks. Exactly. There's really no excuse to sit no. alone in your room. Um, that's the other thing that I realized this semester is that your university hosts a lot of campus events. They'll give away free stuff. We, we have a late night breakfast that's really popular here on campus. and They have world-class yeah. speakers. Exactly. So all these events that your university is hosting for student body, that's coming from your tuition. So you're paying for the mm-hmm. stuff. Take full advantage of it. You know, that midnight breakfast, you paid for those pancakes. Go eat those pancakes. Like, <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> they taste, taste great. great. <laughs> and you'll meet three people Absolutely. you didn't know before. It's funny you brought that up because sometimes when I get a student who decides to spend a lot of time not mm-hmm. coming to class, I remind them, you're yeah. paying for this. You're paying for this. Why are you blowing yeah. it off? And you go home and complain about how you don't have any money. You are wasting money by not using your time in this classroom. But, yeah, I think I'm going to go back to the pandemic because I think the pandemic kind of got us used to sitting. Yeah. Because yeah. we were locked in. And you would have thought that instead of continuing to be locked down, you would have thought we'd be out there running around, jumping around, doing all Some sorts of stuff, did. making up for all the things you didn't get to do. But I think instead, a lot of people got mm-hmm. stove up. I don't know what else to call So, it. so my grandma, one of her, she's quite the words of wisdom person. And mm-hmm. one of her infamous ones is stay in the uncomfortable until it becomes comfortable. And, and oh, that's wow. supposed to be an encouragement of put yourself out there and everything. But I think in this instance... It also explains what happened in COVID is that we were uncomfortable with being locked down, stuck in the house, not being able to hang out with people. But we were in that uncomfortable so long that it became the comfortable. And so now I feel like for a lot of people, especially young people, there's multiple years of their formative life that they're locked inside with nothing but a cell phone or a video game or whatever. It's ever pinging around in their own ears. Zooming into class and everything you get comfortable with that amount of isolation and it becomes uncomfortable to put yourself out there and go experience the world. And I think that's the dilemma that a lot of students, especially those, my dad calls them COVID seniors, the students that are graduating this year. I think it's, that's the challenge is that the new comfortable has become that isolation. So you have to, you have to push yourself, but your university is trying hard and you're paying for all the things they're trying to do. And I think the good news is that most of the university professors we're already teaching and skilled at helping to light intellectual fires and get kids going. So I think a lot of us, we've had to adapt because one of the things we've been required to do is do more right. online, which is a different issue. We ought to talk, we're going to have a whole thought. episode yeah, on, on online learning. But I think most of us know the difference. We see the difference and are trying real hard to jumpstart these kids back into a little more engaged, fully engaged, a little more active life. Now, I'll argue against myself and say on the one hand, it's a good thing to be thoughtful. It's a good thing to be quiet. But it's also these college years are the days when you probably have the most freedom with the least amount of price to pay right. if you screw it up, <laughs> I guess is what I was looking for. And so be aware. There's just a ton There's of some... stuff to do. The other thing that you know, in a roundabout way your tuition pays for is a lot of free access or discounted access to things. Yeah. Because you're a college student, a lot of businesses and companies will offer you a discounted price to things. Like movie theaters are probably the most well-known one where if you bring your student ID, most movie theaters will give you a discount. Really? I didn't know that. 
like? Any software you want. Monday.com is one thing I've recently been getting into. It's a content management um, system. They offer a free subscription. Like Adobe does discounts. Everything from your Spotify and your Hulu and your all your streaming have student discounts. Oh, listen, the research program I use for my bibliography costs twice as much for, for me students. as it does for yeah, students. Yeah, that's yeah, real. Uh-huh. And, uh, and once they get it, then they have it for their whole yeah, life. <laughs> so it's a good, good deal. Yeah. yeah, so all that kind of stuff, too. Look into that. Anything that you go to, even I know the bars here in Tyler, at least, they do a college night where you get in for free with your yeah. college ID. Oh, yeah. I would yeah. suggest to college students, once you get that little ID, anywhere you go, yep. ask, Katie, hey, I'll do a student discount because a lot of these places yeah. do. Yeah, that's good to know. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah. We both, I think, agree that the un- time you spend in university can be so rich, but it's kind of up to you to be sure you get out there and find exactly. those riches. Exactly. Yeah. We'll post our list and maybe some ways to find more lists in the description down below. Yeah. That kind of wraps it up, it, right? That's a wrap, as they say. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening. If you have any questions, please send them to us. We're about to start answering them on our email. That's adrquestions at gmail.com. That's it for us. Thanks, Thanks for, for listening. listening.